Hi YouTube, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I um had well it would have been our ninth um Greek lesson last night, but um Dr. Allman decided to um translate some of the Greek text instead. I mean which he does a lot of the times before he goes into the lesson book. But um I like that because, I mean, I know what's up and the whole story with the conflict in the religions and um, the twisting of the texts and stuff. I mean, I've known this, it seems like many lifetimes now, but um, yeah, I've known this like forever, so it's nothing new to me, so just to hear that other people are on that same page with that understanding the knowledge the knowledge base of the language and i mean and and religion is what i'm going to talk about today because um the importance of it and um i don't think people really realize how closely entwined all major religions are there are actual like a formula um, a dark cabal formula you've heard like like of course how Jesuits are in a Catholic Church and they are a separate order by the way if you didn't know they are not the same religion at all but they work together. The same with Judaism and Islam, Muslim. You are going to see these major religions, Christianity and Judaism. You're going to see not only did they stem from one another but and out of each other, but they're going to go back in to the same church and impose one world religion on you. And then you're going to see what the truly satanic is. You know, the mix. Um, it says uh, the Antichrist came first. Yeah, he did. Look at the world. People are going to get it. We're not waiting for anything to happen. These things that were prophesied have, have happened already. It's almost entirely fulfilled. That's what I'm talking about today. And um, my main topic is, um, I'll be talking specifically to the state of Oklahoma and their educators. They have free reign now where they can teach the Bible in their school system. Oh boy, I have one suggestion. Read the real one. Read the Greek Septuagint, Linear A and B. B has hardly been dug into, but just with the A that has been um, translated, uh, that's where you're going to get the original. You don't want copies. You don't want things that have been written by other people about the original text. You want the original stuff from the original authors. So that's what I would suggest to Oklahoma. Get, read the Greek, the ancient Greek, and I'm sure you can find um, biblical translations of that. They're online. I know like uh, Dr. Allman has uh, Bible studies where he translates Greek just like the one I shared last night. Um, or maybe it was this morning. I think, you know what, it could have been. And I wrote something on there too. I'm going to pull it up because, um, yeah, it seems important. I mean, if they legalize that, I mean, I remember, okay, I had gotten my, I got each of my kids a child Bible, but
but then of course I was there to read them those texts and give them a little deeper insight and uh, knowledge than a lot of other kids might have had with that. But my youngest son in second grade went to take his to um, show and tell, and he wasn't allowed to show that within our school. So he was pretty upset about it, you know. But computer's a little slow today. We've had a lot of stormy weather. I um, tell you about something else in a minute here. Now it's like totally gone. My page, okay, there. Now it's, come on. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I um, shared the I'm a new basic training. Oh, okay. Ancient Greek lesson nine. Yeah. But we didn't get there yet. But I put on top there, and it is true. The Bible has a curse on it. Changing one bit of the Bible acts, activates that curse. Hear the real translation. When, wouldn't you, if you were teaching, something that's meant to be accurate information for people and history, wouldn't you want it to be the real stuff instead of what was hijacked and put under another name? I mean, these people, um, these pastors and priests out there have people... Uh, well... Quite frankly, they've taken taken uh, taken the woman out of the church so she can't even protect her own children while they're there, for instance. That's one thing. And um, that's really the biggest thing. Well, there it was well, the whole thing is it it's dirty. It really is. They've they've Oh, I can hardly even explain it. My eyes are a little foggy today. I'm kind of in between, sort of tired, sort of not feeling the best, and a little, little watery-eyed out of sadness. So I'm kind of battling this, um, not even depression. It's just sad because I, I... I know I'm going to. I know it's going to break open someday. But I need to see a little more understanding of what's happening to the people in the world through religion. You have to understand. It's the people that, the hypocrites that call themselves people of God. That would uh, kill your you or I for not believing in the same God. Basically, that's that's the the biggest biggest murders on this planet were caused by the Christian Church, and it's still happening. You know. I mean, okay, I'm just going to say it. Women have no voice within Christianity. Pretend if you want. I'm a minister. I should know. But go ahead and pretend if you think you do in that man's world. And men are emasculated to have their brotherly love above the reverence that they should pay towards the women in their life that they don't. They should love and cherish their women. They don't. So, and um, they can put it on the woman like she went and did something or whatever. Um, the way men act, I really wouldn't blame them. 
you know, I know men that, um, like I know whole families that watch pornography and then they wonder why their spouses would cheat. Well, nothing's sacred within your household. So what do you have as a foundation? You know? I mean, there's two different types of people in this world. There's people that could see something that that somebody with very few clothes on and they don't look at them like a piece of meat and there's others that do. I guess that's one way I can word it like that. That's like, like I heard some pastor saying that I did on sub two because he was talking about how his daughter wanted to wear like a two piece to go to the beach. Um, <laughs> you know, and he was against that. Yeah, okay. What was she wanting to walk in a bikini downtown in front of thousands of people? Or was she trying to get some sun on her tummy and jump in the water, you know? Then if anybody else is looking at her in a disgusting way and she is at the beach, that's on them, man. <laughs> that's not on her. If she has that innocence, you know, that's just that right there, the innocence of children they, that, I mean, even a lot of mothers aren't aren't protective of their own children's innocence. Some are, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them aren't, you know. So I did, um, because of my eyes, I did look up the Masonic color scheme um, and the meanings of the colors. And what I found wasn't quite what I had read um, in, in the lodge when I was a kid. So, um, and with my eyes kind of hurting today, I decided not to do it. I might someday, but the two, the one was white letters on black and that was really bugging my eyes out. And then the next one I found wasn't as thorough, and it was um, just a light ink on a white page, and both of them were hurting my eyes today. It's like, uh, forget it then. I usually don't have problems with my eyes, but today I kind of did. So, like I say, I think it's like um, overwhelming sadness, tears that are in there, but they won't come out, you know. I can't help it. It's part of my personal makeup, you know. It's not even the things that I'm thinking. It's life in general. And then oh, I, I'm around some extraordinary nonsense. It's anyway. <laughs> I think there's a reason why God's kept me alive this long. Man, is that a miracle. Super miracle. But we do prote protect each other in that respect. So that's just there is what people are going to find out. That there is a marriage that isn't being acknowledged. And... um those lovers are going to let the world know what happened to them. And it has to do with um, taking their innocence away and taking control you know, in a nefarious way that would take innocence from the world in general. But... Um, I've heard it said that Satan and God work together. Well, there's there's different 
personifications of Satan. In my eyes, there are some very demonic, devilish, not in a funny way, filthy, demented type people that um, don't fit the category of, of a even angel status. So even that word Satan isn't um, well he could be my adversary. It depends. Yeah, in general that that term is my adversary. I have it on my Facebook wall. I'm not taking it down because there is even some things, even if a person were um, had that type of control in this world, I'll never bow to that. I have my rules within myself and my flesh and my family that other people are going to abide by eventually just out of logic and reason. They'll come to it eventually, each in their own way, you know. But people are going to find out that the uh, <clears throat> Christian church, your major religions were based on deception. They stem out of deception, and we're going to prove that. And if they start reading that Greek text, you could read the other ones right along. You read the Hebrew one right along with it and see which one sounds more like actual people writing or like what dude you're going to talk in a parable. Why? Don't you want to be understood? You know? Do you see what I mean? Said that Jesus was big on parables, you know. Get to the point. Good teachers don't don't psycho babble your ass. Oh, excuse me. They don't um go in all different directions when you're trying to teach somebody. If you're trying to teach somebody how to like um say uh Oh, put a brake drum on their wheel, you know, on their car. You're not going to tell them 30 different ways to do one thing. There's only one way it goes in and only one way to tell them how it's done. I wouldn't be talking in parables when I'm trying to teach somebody something, you know. Or if I'm teaching somebody how to bake bread, I'm not going to say, well, you could do it this way, but you're going to do it that way or this way or that way because, or um, do you see what I mean? It'd be straight up like get a pack of dry yeast and like four cups of flour, five well, put one on the counter for kneading your bread and you're going to need this much water and let it raise this amount of time instead of, oh, you could possibly use about this amount and it could be rye or wheat or it's like, what are we doing here? Are we actually teaching some, I, I'm trying to make the analogy that um, even, even the, idiosyncrasies of talking in parables is like deceiving, you know. They took what was Psalms and Songs of Solomon. They took what was sacred, like, like the Psalms that was poetry and songs that was written from a, a woman to a man, a man to a woman, um, singing to each other and made it sound almost homosexual. They took out some of the feminine responses. Um, the stuff they did to the scriptures, you'd be, you'd be amazed. It's actually a love story. This whole thing is a love story that um, 
jealousy and greed and rape produced um, unhealthy humans that don't know what's going on. They really don't. I know you feel something's weird inside yourself. You just have to. How could you not? Have you ever been a member of the church and had them annihilate you with money? I'll tell you a story about that. Doug had that happen, too, in his church. He got put down in his church. I'll tell you that first. His father was a ditch digger. Um, in a farming community and also dug graves and um, he wouldn't he didn't he would not go back to this one church in particular because he was berated for the amount of money that he could contribute to that church when I was a kid I had just become a member of my church they had these offering envelopes out on the table, like there was a table for the kids' ones, and they were alphabetized, and the adult ones, and I seen the ones for my parents sitting over there forever, you know. And the pastor actually walked up, like about the third week they were sitting there, and instructed me to take them offering envelopes home, to my parents in front of a bunch of people and said something rather inappropriate to me as a separate member of that church. That really hurt me. It really did. You know? I had my kids put some agates in an offering basket in a Lutheran church one time. I put some money in there, but I just wanted to see the look on his face. And when that got back up there, he was still by his pulpit and his altar there. And the look on his face, he picked him up and looked at him and put him back in there. That was rich, and and that was hard for me to do because I'm a rock hound. It's like for me to even part with one of my pretty little rocks was a hard thing for me to do. So yeah, but I thought it was funny, and I did it on purpose because I was gonna have my kids baptized, and I wanted to see the integrity of this person, you know. So. Anyway, so really shouldn't the where the Jews got their scriptures, where the Christians got their scriptures, shouldn't the original scriptures be read? And just even omens like uh, last night that we should, um, know some Arabic, and yeah, I read that, and I understood what he said to all praises to the Most High. Well, it's a combination of him and her is what their religion, um, what they say their religion is. And then he was talking about the cube of Mecca and how it's said to have their, um, the spirit of the female in there and they kiss it, you know, as they keep her separated from him. That's actually, they don't even know what they're doing, but they're participating in a dark craft to keep uh, that male and female energy separated. And that's what they're doing there, going around that cube and that little cube on the rabbis, and oh yeah, these people know just what they're doing, and they're performing that against 
the parents in this world. Or the one that, that thought he was a parent, but isn't um, totally masculine within his soul. His body looks masculine, but that's not. He's um, practiced too much homosexuality within his mind to be a whole man like that. And that's who um, most major religions are, are paying homage to that entity. Huh. It's the truth of what I'm telling you is true. Huh. I don't know how or when, but I feel like there's going to be a major big reveal on just what I'm telling everybody. And then it's just going to be kind of apparent to everybody. Probably not too far off in the distance, you know. But everybody's like, you know what the big sick secret is? Pedophilia. That's it, right there. Jesus' exact words were, you don't have to tell everybody the truth all the time. What? It says that in the scriptures when he's talking to teenage boys. <coughs> <coughs> Taking them off in the woods to do his rituals with them. To demasculate them against women. That's what those teachings are all about. And it, when you look around, you can see it's working quite well. How can a person that has a Christ spirit in their heart um or you have God in your heart and you don't have a church you can go to or a community, you know, what then? And I know there's, there's millions of people out there that feel the same way. They know they were fooled. They know that it hurt and it didn't feel good. And I know people that say they're Christians that have never even stepped foot in a church. Go try that for a while. Go pay your dues. Become a member of the church. And give it a while. And then tell me how you feel after that. If you haven't done that, you probably couldn't even speak to it. But the ones of you that have, you know just what I'm talking about. When them deacons come around for the offering plate. You know, that's why I like the song by Steely Dan, Deacon Blues, because I'm um, talking about the, it's the night of the expanding man. It's the spirits of God coming together. You know, I know we're in that time. I really do. So, yeah, you can look up them Masonic colors, but it's it's still not as thorough as what I had hoped for. Like, uh, maybe I'll have to go deeper in and look for their banner colors and crest colors and the meanings. Well, the meanings of the colors will still be the same, but, yeah, it's a big deal. It is. Isn't it odd that the colors of the Russian flag are just opposite, 
opposite of ours are red, white, and blue, and theirs are blue, white, and red. And Doug says to me, well, that's a coincidence. What do you think that made means? And I said, well, um, if you mix the colors, it's called purple, you know, indicating that there's some kind of royalty or they have that muses energy that guides the whole world because of they're indicating it with a flag. Yeah, no, it was out of deception, and they'll be losing their power. It also is an indication of the white's purity, and the red is for, well, like blood, and there's different, different meanings to that, too. And the blue is also like a, a um, oh, like of knowledge and reverence and blue blood type of attitude. And then, too, what it doesn't didn't correlate to in that what I was reading this morning was um, just the fact that you're inside your veins, your blood is blue until the oxygen hits it. Everybody's a blue blood until our blood is spilt and then it becomes red. So, what do you think God would do if his um, beloved was murdered and then he put himself on this same plane of existence to make the murderers pay for that separation? What if I told you that's just what's going on? Maybe we're all ghosts. That ghost in the machine, there you go. That would that would account for deja vu. How else could you explain um, something, seeing something, or going through experiencing something that had happened before, exactly like that, or seeing something in the future um, presently and then having that happen. That's not a miracle. That's actually God doesn't have a, a time. He's linear before, future, and now. We're the only ones without that ability, you know? I know it doesn't seem possible, but it is real. Um, this is the type of science that I aspire to understand, and sometimes I just about grasp it. I used to think there was a time where I almost felt like I was genius. I almost had it. Or I had it, but I couldn't. I couldn't explain it. Have you ever felt that, like you, you had a understanding from God, and then like it was, it was like um, fleeting, you know, like you had it, but you just couldn't grasp it, type of thing. Or you'd grasp enough where you could um, maybe dole it out in parts or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I had these major downloads in my life. Many times it was like, wow. The information and what I'd see in people's lives and things that ended up coming true. I mean, it's just a reality. It's not even a miracle. It's just real, you know. So if that happens to you, you're not crazy. So. All right, everybody. I think I think I might have made my point on those Greek texts. I don't know if you. Um. I mean, okay. Now, so now we got people that are hailing Satan because so so you're turned off by the church. I get that part, but 
even for God to take the lowest form of himself to become the aggressor towards mankind. That's still not the accuser of his brethren. That's not. You're talking about demonic Jesus there. But that's yet to be proven. You know. But the devil and Satan aren't the same. Neither is Lucifer. And there is a male and a female entity that are filthy, dirty. That call themselves something that they aren't. And people are going to find out that this world is upside down and backwards. But to go into the realm of actually hailing just means kind of like a hello, okay, like pain, reverence. I can't do that because my aspirations are for the future when that dark entity um, it won't be necessary as that enforcement. Um, that wasn't the that wasn't the perpetrator of the war in heaven. I'll prove that somehow. I know I'll find the information. I'll bring it to you as soon as I find it, but. I, I can't bring you anything if you aren't going to dive into those Greek texts. I mean, the guy's reading it to you. Not in English. He can read. He can t speak fluent ancient Greek, not modern. This is where you want to go to get the truth. So, anyway. Okay, everybody, I love you all. If you do want to um, listen to some of that ancient Greek from last night, it's in my community. It's over on my Facebook page. Um, I think you'd do well to listen to it. Also, I had shared uh, one, another um, D.C. Hume, Hillman's books, Original Sin. And that's not what you think it is either, but they want to blame the woman. And see, this is what I've been screaming about the whole time. There's no way a mother is going to do anything to her family like these monsters have portrayed her as. So anyway, and if you know monstrous women, they have too much testosterone. They're not women. If they don't act like a mother and they're not nurturing and protective, number one, protective. A mom's going to protect you before the dad is. Believe it. Normally. You wouldn't believe the difference. So, some of you might. Some of you might have had good moms like that. I hope you did. So, all right, I'm going to get this uploaded. I appreciate you joining me. Um, please share the information that if Oklahoma's going to be reading that text to little people, I think it's like fourth graders, or they're going to start it. Um, it should be the, the real one, the original one. Then you have to ask yourself, why have major universities cut their Greek language courses out because they don't want the truth getting out but we're working hard trying to get it out there this is for everybody this is so this tyranny and this child abuse can stop and there is child abuse in christians and there is child abuse in judaism and all the rest of it and if you want to ignore it and say they're not just because you're not you don't know what it's all about and what it's founded on. And I'm telling you that. So, And especially, and here's the clincher, I'm a survivor of it. And I would rather die than lie. I would rather lose my soul 
then be a liar. And I am telling you that everything I just said is the truth. So have a good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.